So, thank you all for coming. Yeah. Um, yeah, we would like to introduce you to the wonderful art of trolling. And I think, Dirk, we'll just start right off with what is trolling all about? Yes, what is trolling? Um, so, can I have a question? What do you would say trolling is? Somebody in the audience? Nobody has any idea what trolling is. Yeah, I'm not sure. So, um, we thought about what is trolling as well. So first, we looked in a dictionary. What do you do? You look in a dictionary. We looked in Merriam-Webster's, and it says, trawling is to fish with a hook, and the lines that you pull through the water. The very old definition, it's centuries old. Trawling is a centuries old hobby and hobbyist. And of course, you can tell a lot about trawling and a lot about the technique that's go on. First, you can there's recreational trawling. And there's commercial trolling on a big scale. You can troll in lakes and rivers. You can troll in the sea. You can have um, long lines, dark lines. You can troll for small fish. You can troll for big fish. There's a lot to say about trolling. We thought, oh, there's so much trolling going on. It's centuries old. There's so many fish in the water. We should focus on one thing. And on what thing we focus, Rebecca will tell us. So the most important thing about trolling is bait. Bait decides what fish you will be able to catch. Bait comes in very many forms. You can have artificial bait, which is what we all know, you know, these colorful trinkets you have about. We have natural bait, dead fish, live fish, worms, insects, whatever. Anyway, I'm going to start with the, well, the most complicated part of bait, and then we will get more easy as this is a beginner's workshop, so we will just brush over to artificial bait. Artificial bait comes in all kinds and colors. What it's supposed to do is to attract fish, and fish can't see very well, which is, comes as no surprise. You know, most water is very murky, you won't be able to see very far, nobody would. So what fish do is they detect pressure waves. And what the artificial bait is supposed to do is to imitate the fish the target fish is supposed to go for when swimming through the water. So what, uh, well, what we do essentially is we need to take the artificial bait and drag it through the water, which is what trolling is all about, dragging a hook through water with the artificial bait. It's important to remember that artificial bait will behave differently at different speeds. So you might add a sinker for it to go downward, so you can drag more deeper fish. You might uh, drag it a little faster, so it will actually wiggle a bit more like the fish you want to imitate, to catch the fish you want to catch, and so on. But on some days, even the best artificial bait won't catch you any fish. So what we need to do is talk about live bait. I will start with the one that actually, I think, is, well, it's a bit morbid. It's a very Frankensteinian bait. Worms from vending machines. Worms from vending machines are electrocuted on a regular basis, so they go to the surface and mate better. So you will have more worms in your can when you get it from the vending machine. But it's a bit gruesome, so we will go on to the, well, I think it's kind of more gruesome. Bait fish. Um, you can have the dead form. I mean, we all, well, most of us will eat fish, so, you know, nothing's wrong with that, eating some fish. But you can also catch live fish. Many a trolling adventure actually starts with the trollers heading out to sea and catching live fish before they go for the big catch. So, there is a, a, quite a big discussion in the angling community about if this is ethical. So, should, should we use live fish? It is obviously cruel to the fish being hooked that way. But then again, it does emit, well, it is actually the fish you want to bait with, isn't it? 
So it makes catching the big cats and complicated fish a lot more easy. So you go for the live bait that way. And then some people say, well, you know, it, it's just cruel, and since trolling is a sport, something you do for recreation, you really shouldn't be using live fish and being that cruel to animals. Some people say you could also extend that argument to the fish you are catching and trying to catch, but I think this would take the discussion too far. So I'm just going to move on, and we are going to show you how you can hook live bait. Shrimp. Yes, as Rebecca said, um, using live fish is kind of difficult, and it's ethical, questionable. And actually, in most jurisdictions, in Germany at least, it's not allowed. You're not allowed to use live fish. But what you're allowed is to use live shrimp. You can trawl everywhere with live shrimp, um, and you need some technique to catch with it, because you want to have a live shrimp and not a dead shrimp. So the most important thing is not to hit the brain. The brain is around here, and you really don't want to hit it with your hook. So there's two ways. There's one easy way, just use the tail. Take the hook, use the tail, then you have a nice wriggling shrimp where you can catch fish with. The other one, the shrimp has a hook around here. It's in front of the brain, and if you hook it here, it still will wiggle, and you can still can live fish, and it's very successful um, if you want to troll. And if you want to harm fish anyway, since, since you wouldn't troll, you can use live fish, Catch, take the hook right behind, in front of the brain, behind the horn, and it makes a great bait for trolling. But um, in preparation of this talk, we looked in Merriam-Webster, and we found there's actually more kinds of trolling. Um, it's not all about fishing, unluckily, and the other things. Merriam-Webster says trolling is, for example, singing loud. You can say, I trolled in the shower today. And another one is um, to go through things, like, I trolled around the flea market today. It's all in the dictionary, it's quite old. And there's a new one, it's actually not in Merriam-Webster. It's too new, it's, I hope it will go away, and it's just modern, strange stuff with strange thingies. Um, that's trolling on the internet. Some of you may have heard about it, it's new, modern, strange. Um, and we decided to tell you about that as well, because obviously some people like to talk about it, and there are people in this world who are interested about it. So what does trawling on the internet make? Um, first of all, it disrupts communication. I think that's um, common to all kinds of trawling, it's disruptive. And the internet circles, being disruptive always sounds great. Hey, new technology, new something, new everything. But in reality, disrupting often um, just disrupts communication. So there's an end to it. Um, as the speaker before said us, you get emotional, everything is going bad, and the communication ends, and people are hurt. In my opinion, that's not trolling, that's just anti-social behavior, and I wouldn't qualify it as trolling. Because trawling on the internet, as well with fish, has to do something with skill and with fun, and Rebecca will tell us something about that. That's your part. Right. <laughs> fun. As you may have noticed, especially for us, and I think for a lot of trolls out there on the internet, trolling is about fun. The very least people who should have fun when trolling is the trolls. They really should. If you are trying to troll, and you are not laughing while you are doing it, you're doing something wrong. It is also probably a very good indicator that this might not be okay, or trolling, or whatever. So, the thing is, be playful about it. Enjoy what you are doing. Enjoy this moment of stepping out of your usual comfort zone, of the way you are used to communicate. The end product should not be useful. It really shouldn't. Whatever you produce with a troll, if somebody asks you, what is the point of it? Why did you do that? Well, for fun. That is the point. There is no useful thing coming out of this. So if you're wondering about this, talking about angling on an internet conference, we did not want all of you to become anglers. We just no. saw the point and took it. Well, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> 
And so we thought, well, let's talk about angling. In essence, what trolling is, is a form of art. And I thought long and hard about this, and I looked at art in the history, and what, is, what kind of art did we have, and how is art usually treated. And normally you would, you would have art in, in very confined spaces that are about art. You have a certain place and a certain time where you have art. And there is one form of art from the early 20th century that quite a few will know, and that is Dada. Essentially, what, well, Dada was really confined to the art space. Dada never tried to break out. Dada stayed in the art space. It was art because it happened in the art space. Otherwise, it would just be disruptive rubbish, which is what a lot of people might actually call trolling. So basically, if you want to have a kind of definition what trolling really is about, it's free-range data. <laughs> and so, as I already said, what we did is play with expectations. We actually submitted a, uh, an abstract for an angling talk. That is what we did. That was actually originally our intention until we felt that maybe we should open it up a bit more. Um, but actually, we submitted a talk to talk about angling. And just because of the context of an internet conference, this was thought to be a talk about trolling on the internet. So whenever you want to troll, play with what your audience expects. Be aware of the context you are moving in. And that is really the key. Just take something out of context and move from there and have a lot of fun with it. And our inspiration, we really want to thank this guy, <laughs> because this book uh, was part of our work at Wikimedia for a long time, and it stood on Dirk's, um, Dirk's desk, and is actually the original um, inspiration for this talk, The Art of Trolling. Um, yeah, this book in original is from the 17th century, and it's really, really expensive, but there are a lot of cheap reprints on the internet. And it's just nice to have, and it's actually it's a great conversation starter. And it's, you learn a lot about angling as well, so I really can emphasize this book. And so now we have two uh, ways to go forward. Either we can have a discussion, or we can tell you more about 10 minutes on beyond trawling, fishing without bait. As you can see, you can use um, trawling with bears, and you can use nets, or you can even use dynamite which is not friendly to ecosystems, but it's a really interesting topic. <laughs> even, if you, um, don't want to, if you, even if you want to discuss now, I would really encourage you to care about dynamite fishing. And now, questions, answers, some more about bait. I can go on and on about bait, but <laughs> there's a question over there. Yeah, hi. Um, okay. Did you push the button and why? <laughs> if we push the button, yeah, I mean, we talked seven minutes about fishing. That is actually a sincere talk about fishing. We did a lot of research and know a lot more about angling than we'd ever thought we would know. <laughs> That's really interesting. I, I actually could hold talks about angling by now. Yeah. <laughs> and I think we should apply it at an angling conference. But I think the interesting part is, you know, um, the submission is about actually about fishing. There's nothing written about the internet on the submission, and we really thought maybe we could talk just about angling and fishing. And they said, ah, maybe it's too impolite, and maybe people are getting hurt. And when falling is always a fine line with hurting people, and I really don't want to do that. It just brings them some new ideas and disrupt the communication, but don't be too mean. Yeah. So we thought maybe we should open it up a bit and have a discussion about it. What is, whatever kind of trolling it is, and if you, we, or if you should use live fish or not, or if trolling with swims is actually ethical or is it not more or less ethical than any, anything else. So, any more questions? Or do you have the trolling experience you want to share with everybody? Now's your chance. <laughs> Over there.
Thank you. Um, I was wondering, given the fact that um, trawling with the fish is kind of a one-way experience for the hunter and the treasure, um, what I was missing is the point that if we go on the internet trawling, there's kind of an interaction. So what is if the fish becomes interactive and says, fuck you? Oh, there's, there's a ton of YouTube videos about fish becoming very, very interactive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we learned that a lot of uh, YouTube videos about angling are actually um, dubbed with metal music because it seems to be such an exciting sport. And you can see people trying to um, get the fish out of the water, which are huge. <laughs> And they are they are very interactive. <laughs> and I would say that that's actually the difference between trawling and harassment, because in trawling and fishing trawling, it's interaction. It's always between you and the fish, and actually the fish has to do most of the work and it's some kind of interaction. Whereas harassment, people nothing do. That's more like dynamite fishing. It's throw something in the water, everything is broken, everything is down, and that's, in my opinion, no fun. I mean, it's very effective dynamite fishing as well as harassment but it's just not a good way. And I think trawling is all about interaction, and it's all about you and the fish and trying to have a game with each other. And um, on the internet, at least, people don't get killed and not, don't get eaten, which I think is a major point for internet trawling, except real trawling. Nobody gets eaten. So I'm interested, do you guys contemplate really doing a whole talk just about fishing just to be the ultimate troll to everyone yes. in here? Okay. Yes, we actually did. <laughs> <laughs> How long were you on the fence for that? Uh, actually quite a long time until uh, I talked to somebody I, I really like and who was really an inspiration to me uh, and she was like, well, what's the point? What are you doing? Why are you doing this? And I have to admit I just wasn't troll enough to just pull through and do 30 minutes straight of fishing. <laughs> We were tempted, I have to admit. Yeah, we, we were, we were very, the... very tempted. <laughs> hey, uh, thank you, first of all. But, um, is there a favorite troll that you guys have? So. I, I don't know who the person actually is. There, there is a, pers a favorite uh, trolling action I actually have. It's a robot. It's called Stabby. Um, and it was introduced to a conference about um, drones and robots that might kill people. And when the person who, who entered this robot, which is essentially a robot that has a knife and it does stabbing movements, um, entered this People were asked, well, how does it kill people? And he said, well, it stabs people. That is what it does. And I think this, this is one of my favorite trolls because it really, um, it really brings home um, the topic of this could actually kill people. It is totally useless. It does nothing, you know, everybody would be able to evade this. And um, yeah, basically the whole idea of saying, okay, I'm gonna take this idea and make something completely useless out of it and make people think about this whole topic in a different way is my favorite. Yeah, what I liked last week, I don't know if you have gotten at the Hamburg S-Bahn, somebody just put a wall in one of its doors. I thought, this is totally useless, this is a lot of fun. It's kind of disruptive and it's really, really it's expert trolling. Just put a wall in the door of a train, which makes no sense at all. But it's a great conversation start that went through the media for days, if not weeks. And I think it brought a lot to think about trains and S-bahns as well. So that's what I liked the last days and weeks a lot. Okay. Then, if there are no more questions, now's your last chance. Yeah. Ah, there's one. <laughs> Um, so one last question, uh, can I get my 30 minutes back? <laughs> no, no that, that is put, the point of trolling. <laughs> no, but you could have gone after two minutes. Then. I have one, one more, uh, I want to mention something just for anyone who's a troll, who's probably realized, ah, oh, I'm addicted. There's a self-help self -help program called Zero Tolerance, and I really would like to <laughs> share it to you guys, because it's really fun, <laughs> just in case. 
Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for listening. <laughs>